Hello everybody. I wanted to go through a little bit of LC stuff today. LC stands for liquid culture. Uh, liquid culture can be used in a variety of ways, uh, but that's kind of not the point of this video. The point is how to use it. So what I'm going to do here is basically take some liquid uh, culture. So this is not a liquid inoculant. This is actual uh, where I've taken a piece of agar and I've actually put it into clean liquid culture. This is basically just LME. It's a uh, half percent LME. There's a lot of different recipes for liquid culture. Uh, simpler is better. better. I, I generally don't, re I don't think it's required unless you have a very specific purpose uh, to use peptone or honey or many of the other things um, that, that you see in liquid culture recipes as well as agar recipes. Um, this is just straight LME at like half percent. I've even done 0.25 percent, uh, one percent. Some people go up to like four percent. That's probably way, way too much. What happens, uh, as you can see here, this this is about two months old, and what started to happen is the mycelium has started to grow on the surface, the sort of air um, liquid interface. That could be a problem simply because we have to pull it through this 18 gauge needle. 18 gauge needle is normally pink. Uh, and I'm going to try to pull that stuff, those chunks, through this needle. So sometimes it's actually better to have wispy growth. As long as your culture is clean, you don't really want chunks in your, um, in your, in your LC. So that being said, we also want a little bit of air exchange. This is what's called an airport lid, like air port. Two words, but that's been kind of uh, corrupted in the airport, like where you fly from. Um, but the real original reason was airport. This is a 0.22 micron or uh, micro M, that micron um, filter, uh, used for syringes. So you could put this on there. That is not the intention of this. The intention of this is to basically exchange oxygen and give the culture oxygen what it needs. Um, this is what's called a SHIP, self-healing injection port. It's what's called a SEPTA or septum, uh, singular in the medical community. It's what you see on top of a a uh, medicine vial that you might see at the hospital, probably not at, not at home unless you're you know, an insulin user. Um, so in the bottom here, you can put a stir bar. I've got marbles. Marbles work, work really well uh, and they're really, really cheap and you can pressure cook it. So every few days you want to give this a little shake. I've actually kind of neglected this because it's been sitting around for two months and, I, and someone has asked me about liquid culture and I thought, hey, I've got some liquid culture sitting around. I used it about a month ago to inoculate. A bag of popcorn uh, and then today I'm gonna do a bag of popcorn I can use it for rice I can I can do many 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 things with this so what I want to do is show you the basic technique so I'll call yourself up spray the ship self-healing injection port maybe even give it a wipe depending on how long it's been sitting around and I have a little bit of tissue right here so I'm gonna get the dust off there and I, there's a lot of different variations on this. I like to use the plastic lids, how to make these. I've got another video about them. I like to use these glass containers um, that are easily available here. Some people might use port jars, metal lids, stainless steel lids. They've got a whole line of products based around this idea now. Um, I find this the easiest and really simple. That lid costs about maybe a quarter to make. Uh, and the jar is reusable and that costs maybe 50 cents. I don't know, it's ridiculously cheap. Uh, and I've used my food wrap around the top. Anyway, let me, let me get to it here. So what I did was I took a culture. Okay, so I took one of my average, you know, agar cultures and I cut out a little piece of that and I just chucked it into a clean bottle of LC. And then this is about two months old, but usually after about seven to 10 days with, with stirring, um, you can get a nice, nice culture that will be ready to use. Uh, there's other things you can do with this. You can do what are called needle biopsies. I have another video about that. Uh, needle biopsies are awesome because you can literally take that needle, that 18 gauge needle, and ster surface sterilize a, a fruit body. And you can literally jab that in and pull out a piece of tissue and inject it directly into your LC. It's brilliant. You never have to touch an agar plate. Now that is a little bit more finicky because if you get contamination like bacteria into LC, it will just mess everything up. The minute you introduce bacteria or any other contaminant into this liquid culture, it's pretty much done. You can clean them up, but I, I've spent like literally months cleaning bacterial LC cultures up because they were the only ones I had left and it's just a pain in the butt. So if you can, you wanna either Take the lid off and inoculate it with a clean piece of tissue. Do a needle biopsy, which I actually prefer now. 
that tiny, I mean, you literally only need like a quarter of a grain of rice size in that 18 gauge needle. Get it in there sterilely and let it kind of chill out for a couple days. Give it some oxygen by shaking it around. And literally within like two weeks, you'll have enough. That's about 100 mils of, of LC. That's enough to inoculate probably 50 pounds of grain, like 20 kilos of grain. I just weighed this. This is a kilo of popcorn. I'm going to literally use like two cc's, two milliliters to inoculate that whole bag. So you can get bigger syringes. This just happens to be a 10 cc, 10 ml. They're quite readily available um, and they're cheap. I think that costs about a nickel, uh, maybe 10 cents in America. That thing costs like a penny. So when, again, this is one of those things, once you start to do it yourself, you start to realize like, wow, why am I paying 20 bucks for an LC? Is there range when I can just get the syringe? And I'm gonna show you another thing. You could take two cc's of this pre-existing culture, assuming it's clean, and you can make another 100 mils of it, like very, very easily. You notice that's a little cloudy, don't worry about that. That's just leftover from the LME. Um, when you autoclave, uh, PC, pressure cook, um, LME, and other things, they get cloudy. The mycelium does not care, you guys. The thing with clear plates and whatnot, it's, it's silly, really. I mean, I know people like pretty things, but you see that plate? Can't see through it. I don't care. I really don't care. And believe me, the fungi don't either. So, again, since I've been talking, I'm going to spray down my needle. Uh, I wouldn't completely saturate the needle part because it does have the this paper backing but since I'm going to use it like right now um, it's already stale the only reason I did that is to get off the dusty kind of stuff or if there is dust I want it to kind of be wet dust so there's a little trick with these guys you fold them back and then when you fold them back that paper will uh, basically separate and then kind of put that aside so I sprayed the top of my ship here already and I'm going to do this kind of quick and probably not talk too much while I'm doing it uh, remember, this needle is sterile when it comes. Do not, do not, do not, do not, please start wiping stuff down with a dirty ass alcohol saturated rag or tissue or whatever. I this like really, really gets me going when I see people. They'll take this sterile needle. This needle has been irradiated by cobalt 60 gamma radiation. It is as sterile as you're gonna get until you touch it with something like a dirty ass napkin or cloth. Do not do that, you guys. These are meant to go straight into people. Like, you surface sterilize a person when you're injecting them, but you don't sterilize the freaking needle. Can you guys stop doing that, please? Like, if you look on here, it says sterile, single use, da 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 da. As long as you don't touch this needle to anything or the tip of that syringe barrel to anything, you are fine. So let's not, let's not do that, okay, please? So let me give this a good shake. I'm also gonna, what they say, aspirate. This is a fancy word for sucking some of it out. Uh, when I do that, there's a few tricks and I'll try not to uh, spit all over it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna inject it. Let me just do it, you guys. This gets ridiculous. I'm, 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 I could go on about this for hours because I've seen so many wrong ways to do this. Um, again, I already did this, so I'm actually gonna probably talk, but so when you open this, don't touch it, right? If you can manage to keep it like in your fingers, again here, open this, just pull it straight out, right? So I haven't touched anything there. Uh, you may notice this has got a straight shooter on it. Sometimes they come with a lure lock, which is basically a twist. You want to give it a twist anyway, because you want to sort of dislodge the needle so that when you pull it out, <laughs> oh, that was not going to cooperate. So I'm gonna actually get in there because I'm not gonna to touch the actual needle. I'm gonna get in there, I just sprayed my hands. I'm gonna get in there and kind of help it. There you go. So let me get that whole thing out of there. Now remember, these are really, really sharp. Um, I heard somebody say in another myth today about how these get dull very quickly. They don't get dull, you guys. That's very, very, very sharp. It will stab you. It'll go straight through a glove, no problem. So notice I still have some alcohol on top of my ship. I don't care, I'm gonna go right through it. Notice also I'm keeping that in my hand. I haven't let it roll around or touch anything. It's a lot safer in my hand. So I'm gonna give that one last swirl and I have to tilt. I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. Um, I'm gonna actually put this down even though I normally want it just for the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get it. I'm also doing this backwards. I have to get my tip. I don't want air. Right? So again, don't play with the plunger while it's out in the non-sterile air, right? So I'm gonna push down, they leave you a couple millimeters there. Push down, that'll dislodge the barrel. And then I'm just gonna suck back in. 
Now already I'm getting chunks. So what you have to do is kind of go back and forth. And you can see right there, I got a good pull and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you weren't happy with it, shoot it all back in, right? Now, again, you're, you're possibly introducing some air in there, so be careful, but, so notice how my, my fingers, this, is, this takes a little practice, you guys, and especially because I'm doing it like backwards. So you gotta kinda, especially if you get a chunk, go back and forth with your finger and just kinda get it up in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but again, I don't really like touch and see because now that little plunger, I've touched it with my fingers. It's better to just get it in a one-off and a one-go, but you'll, you'll, you'll develop your own technique. Now you see there, now I'm going to come straight out. Here's the neat thing. That thing is still sterile, so I'm going to take a new bottle of liquid culture. Spray that, right? Brand new blank. And in this case, I'm gonna actually heat it up a little bit because I don't know where the chunks have went and whatnot. So I'm gonna kind of give this just a little bit of a, of a heat treat in here. I kind of just want to like dry it off and since I'm talking, I kind of want to, I don't know, uh, kind of go see the flame is always good. So anyway, I'll heat that up a little bit and I'll let that 70% alcohol I'll do it. Remember, this is my new bottle. I haven't labeled it yet. New pressure cook. I do, I do an hour, you guys. Everybody's talking about 15 minutes. Okay, do what you want. I, I suggest 45 minutes to an hour. My PC only gets up to 12 PSI, but these people that are talking 15 minutes, uh, they don't really know what they're talking about. Okay, when you're doing microbiological work, like with bacteria, you can get away with a lot of issues that we don't, we can't get away with in the mycological community. Bacterial media is quite selected for bacteria. Um, if you've ever tried to grow mushrooms on bacterial media, like SAB or McConkie or whatever, um, they don't really grow well. That's because that media is made for um, bacteria. So I got that all flamed up. Let it cool down a little bit. Make sure I don't have open flame. Let me give that a little spray again. I'm gonna shoot like two cc's. Maybe even one cc. I got a lot of chunks there. Again, straight out. So that is my new bottle of liquid culture. You see the chunks in there? Again, all those little chunks that were there before, that's just conglomerated proteins from the LME. It's just chunks. The mycelium literally will latch onto that and eat it. So in about a week when that mycelium sort of wakes up, uh, remember these things need oxygen, so don't forget to give them a little close. Do not shake them, you guys. Don't do this thing. It's not like a bag of popcorn, like, uh, you know, microwave popcorn. It's not like that. Just swirl it like this. That's more than enough oxygen. Uh, in fact, the idea that I use the uh, liquid culture for is that it, it kind of, it stores like that's, well, that's pushing almost two, two and a half months now. Um, that's sort of like going to stay in like the, the, that condition for literally a year. Uh, I've pulled LC out of out of bottles that were a year old that hadn't even been shaken. Um, perfectly fine. Within literally like days. Like you pull it and you put it into some brand new LC um, and you give it a week or two and man that thing will just, it'll come right back. Um, now there's contamination issues again. That's another issue that's getting along already. So let me just knock up this bag here. Here's what I do. I'm going to put this syringe down again because I sterilized my work surface and um, I'm going to flame it anyway. X. Again, these bags here. I got other videos about this. I'm using corn today. You can use patty rice. You can do whatever you want. Now, here you go. This is where you might want to have the micro pore tape ready or not. What I'm going to do is essentially, these are like, I don't know, 0.3 mil. I don't know the thickness of these bags. I get them from the shop. Um, so, here we go. Let me heat this up and I'm just literally going to stab this right through. I'll call the X and get this just hot enough to where it'll poke straight through that bag. And this, this requires a little bit of dexterity and finesse, I guess you could say, right through X marks the spot, three cc's, flame it again, put it off to the side for now, I'll wrap it up later, don't burn yourself. And then what I do is, say, here's where you can get a piece of micro pore tape, or what I do now, a lot easier, fold it over the X, give it a couple more folds, staples through the fold part. Don't get into the inside of the bag, you guys. That's it. 
don't shake it too much. Again, this is not like a bag of popcorn, you guys. Well, it literally is a bag of popcorn, but um, you don't want to be like, this is, you're just trying to like distribute that a little bit. Now remember, this will take a good three, five days to come back, depending on how much LC. This is another case, you guys, where more is not better. I don't want liquid water at the bottom of my bag or jar. If that's a problem, put a paper towel, not tissue probably, but a paper towel, a hand towel. Put it in the bottom. You guys do not want to shoot so much LC, whether it's rice or millet or grain or BRF or an Uncle Ben's tech, um, Uncle Beck Ben's bag or whatever. You do not want liquid culture floating around. You do not want liquid, liquid, liquid. Do not want it. Uh, again, that's pretty much it. I could go on for days and days about the attributes of this and, and some of the problems you could have, but that's the basic idea. And this video is already 15 minutes. So I'm gonna clean up, label you guys. Remember, label, 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 label. Uh, you guys don't need to see me doing that. I'll flame this again, I'll cap it up, and that will go in the refrigerator. Uh, again, you can use a 10cc uh, you know, syringe for, for probably five, six bags, and, but I don't really care because I'm gonna have another 100 mils, 150 mils of liquid culture in like a week or two. So I don't really care, you guys. Liquid culture, um, along with the needle biopsies, as well as just the simplicity of it and the storage, um, it's, it's brilliant. Again, you guys, the recipes will vary. Half a percent LME, no honey, no Pepto, none of that crap, you guys. I don't know, that's people trying to sell their recipes sell their pre-mixes or whatever. Literally, LME, the cheap stuff, half percent works fine. Um, so, you guys, sorry if I'm ranting a little bit, but this is a topic I, I, get, uh, I get pretty excited about. It's brilliant. If you're new to mycology, it might seem a bit foreign, but if you are, are already past the auger plate stage and you know how to get a good clean culture um, and you can basically like make Kool-Aid, um, you can make liquid cultures that easy. Look for, you know, next time you go to the dollar store or the canning aisle or, or you know, maybe even la next time you finish that bottle of olives, uh, you know, <laughs> pepperoncini, look at the lids and see uh, what kind of drill bits you got laying around. Uh, again, these filters, they come in different sizes. You want the 0.22 microns. Um, they different sizes, different colors. Oh, should mention, you want the PTFE. You want something that's hydrophobic. If this does fall over, you want to make sure it doesn't leak out the top. I just had that happen with a with a Pepsi I bought from the shop. <laughs> Leaked all over my leg while I was driving my motorcycle. Um, so you don't want that to happen. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Again, make sure you label everything. And I think that's uh, enough for now. So I will talk to y'all later. Sorry, my voice is a little messed up today. Um, I will <laughs> I will chat with y'all later. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.